Hello there, thank you for clicking on to this video and today I will be talking about how I see the state of Linux to the desktop user. This is going to be a very rambly vlog so if you're looking for some succinct, professional, uh, intelligent insight you're probably better off looking elsewhere but I've been using Linux for quite some time now, I've switched around more than a few distributions and I've seen it evolve quite a lot. So I am going to just be sharing with you some of the most welcome improvements over the the past few years and um, and how I feel Linux stands up against other distributions um, and other operating systems today. 2015 was the year that I got rid of my Windows partition so I think that says a lot in and of itself. It was only the games holding me back and there has you know Linux has received quite a lot of criticism over the years that it just doesn't have as many games as Windows and it doesn't. Um, and it won't in the near future. But at the time I last saw, it had 1,700 games. That's really quite a lot. And there are some genres where there are big sort of holes in, in terms of games that, uh, that, uh, that Linux is, is particularly light on, like a lot of open world games and a lot of tri AAA titles don't often make it to Linux. But I've got to admit, over the past couple of years, I've really been excited by indie gaming so much more than AAA gaming that I felt a lot, um, a lot of comfort, comfort from moving from Windows to Linux, where otherwise I would have felt particularly nervous um, because I'd be going without a lot of games. But, in, uh, you know, I, I have about 200 games in my Steam library and about 160 of them run uh, on Linux natively and I can get the vast majority of the others to run through uh, Wine and play on Linux. That's Those are fantastic pieces of software. And I've got to admit, I have been considering investing in Crossover, not necessarily because I need it, because everything that I really wanted to work works either through uh, Linux directly or, uh, in the case of some games, I, I do play them through through Wine, but everything works fine. Crossover is, is often if you need an extra you know, new piece of uh, software in order to run your Windows game on Linux. I just would like to support the company, I think. I'm kind of getting to that stage because they do a lot of um, uh, con you know, code contribution. Um, but just about any game that's made before... So I think that's like DirectX 10 and before in regards to, um, you know, Microsoft DirectX pretty much works on my uh, on my machine and uh, through Linux. And and in, in a couple of years, I would imagine that there will be support for DirectX 11. Um, I think that's the, the way it goes, unless we're like as far back as DirectX 9. But regardless, you know, like I'm happy with the games. Like my favorite uh, Elder Scrolls games, uh, Fallout games run, obviously not... Um, uh, the latest Fallout 4. I think I've seen some people run it through Crossover, but I'm not 100%. I haven't tried it myself. But uh, Fallout New Vegas and all that kind of stuff uh, you know, works for me. So games that I sort of grew up with have no problem running. And there's plenty of new titles. In fact, some really exciting new titles because the intellectual property that AAA titles have usually, you know, sort of owned... Um, is not necessarily available on Linux. I've been looking elsewhere for games, and I've, I've got to say, I found some really uh, interesting cheap, uh, treats that I would not really have expected to see had I not have, have been um, sort of put more firmly into the indie space. But like I say, I've been very excited by the state of indie gaming as a result of the last couple of years of development, and uh, I like to see, uh, you know, I, I, I like seeing as many indie games on the Linux platform as possible. And I think that there's a, there's a reason why I'm a little bit more endeared to the indie games and the smaller games is because... There is a, certainly a profit motive, and I would imagine that profit mo motive is proportionally better from a from an indie standpoint. Although there have been indie say uh, indie developers saying that it's probably not worth the profit of this state of you know in the current state of play, um, the you know the work and and, and turnover, uh, and whereas like AAA titles would almost certainly make a lot of money out of it. Um, I like the fact that it's very clear that indie developers are developing for Linux because they want their games to reach as many people as possible rather than the profit motive. They want, um, you know, and, and they care about gaming and they care about um, their product and, they, you know, and they, they're proud of their product, a lot of these indie developers. They've got a lot of personal investment in it. So so it's, it's great to see that expressed on Linux and I'm glad to see Linux as a platform for it and I'm glad to see it taken more seriously by the likes of Unreal Engine and Unity as well. We're not on parity yet, but, I mean, we will be and, and we're very, you know, um, we're going in the right direction, and and that at this time of this, this time is is good enough for me. We're going in the right direction. Um, so I certainly haven't missed games. I have not missed games 
really one bit because um you know i know in a couple of years they'll just they'll they'll be ready to work on on wine and there's plenty on steam so there we go the other criticism that linux often receives and the one which i feel it has also made a fair amount of strides in is multimedia specifically video editing i'm not super familiar with audio editing the audio editing side of things because the only audio editing i do is uh, just the or the audio for these videos but i i personally feel that the suite of tools available to manipulate all the audio in post is is um it's all there and it's all you know it's, it's fantastic and even the free file formats are even usable and everything like that it's all hunky dory and 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 and, um, and and it works all fine out of the box for me for musicians and, and and the like i'm not entirely sure and obviously you'll have to ask them in regards to video editing this is where it's where, where linux has come along uh, in in um you know leaps and bounds and it's going to get a lot better now uh, talking i use caden live uh, which is the uh, it's a qt application it's quite heavily um integrated with the kde plasma type structure of things which is always a little bit irritating considering that um that i use gtk desktop but you, you know you sort of get over it it's a good piece of software it's gone through some buggy phases uh, has caden live um and that's no surprise in considering what an advanced piece of software video editing software is but um the last couple of you know getting back into the swing of doing daily videos again uh caden live has not crashed once on me yet over the past couple of weeks which is really quite good actually so a certain marked improvement over a couple of years ago um and i really would like to see caden live um i'd love to see a gtk version i would really love to see a gtk version but um outside of that i i would like to see it just just grow and, and get particularly more get more stable um and, and and a few more features see if you know multi-threading or or gpu accelerated encoding and stuff like that can can be put on next um but yes i mean i gotta say in the two areas linux was most criticized for it has made up amazingly and everything else it's just it's 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 almost leading the way in a lot of places and i suppose one of the biggest assets that we've had that linux and that open source has had and, and a lot of you are going to probably get quite angry when i say this but it probably is google if we're completely honest google have definitely been pushing the way for a lot more open standards as of late so i'm not necessarily just talking about open sourcing the android operating system because it was it was google's choice to to open source it android uh, under their original under the original company were going to keep it as a proprietary operating system possibly so um i say possibly because i have no idea what android's plans were if they weren't getting bought out by google like it's impossible to say but um it doesn't like google have particular vested interest in the open source world so they um so they did open source the android um operating system uh they have developed and created and open sourced a lot of fonts one of the things that a lot of people don't realize um when it comes to linux is that linux was lacking a lot of free fonts that looked really nice that could be used in professional publications um and and google did actually contribute my personal favorite is open sans i love doing documents in open sans and i know that fonts aren't exactly like the sexiest thing in the world to talk about but they are something that are factored in it's little small things that um that need to be kept on top of if if you know if linux is going to make it we can we can make the big hurdles we know that but we've also got to remember to to tighten um you know tighten every screw and uh sand off every corner so you know we've got a uh so so google have done that as well they've also brought about the popularity of an open video format webm using vorbis for the audio no less as well um this is fantastic it might be a codec that's a little slower to encode than mp4 but it's a widely um supported open source video format where there really there were some contenders but there was nothing on a par with 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 webm and it's found its niche um in terms of um you know like little looped videos you see a lot of them in webm format um you see the um youtube adopt it um for a lot of for for the 360p and the 720p versions of the videos in their video player i think so the, like we owe google a lot for that as well um what else they've they've open sourced quite a lot they're closing down of course their their um coding platform but they say that's as a result of i don't know i'll let them explain that one but I know that Google, of course, also um, are some of the worst um, worst offenders when it comes to dealing with personal information and, um, and and that kind of stuff as well. So 
it, they have given a lot back, but they, it, I mean, it comes at a really heavy price. And it could very well be in the case that where Google might become the next Microsoft in its overbearingness, in its surveillance and all that kind of stuff, we could very well save ourselves from Google using the tools that Google has provided. And I think that's really quite interesting and one of the great ironies of open source software. It's another one of the other great ironies of open source software is, of course, that North Korea uh, use uh, Linux distribution, Red Star OS, and and that the uh, NSA use, I think, is it um, CentOS or Red Hat servers to... Um, uh, you know, to do all their spying and all that kind of stuff as well. So, um, so yeah, that's 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 the thing about open source, and that's the thing about sort of you know, freedom of speech and 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 the the sort of the software applications of that is that you know you make something available for everyone. It's going to be used by the people that you like and the people that you don't like as well. So, so there's all of that. Um, so. This is also the, uh, 2015 is also a year where I changed my primary driver, my primary Linux distribution. I used to be a big advocate for Mint. I still am a huge ab advocate for Mint. If you are new to Linux, if you don't know what distribution you uh, want to get, Linux Mint is generally my recommendation. It has all the power um, of, of Ubuntu's technology. It has all the compatibility with Ubuntu's technology. Um, and it has a lot of the you know the the great works and a lot of the um a lot of the manuals and documentation also that apply to ubuntu also apply to mint but mint adds this community element to it it's almost like um like like all the corporate stuff was was stripped out of ubuntu and replaced with community elements and that's what linux mint is it uses a more traditional desktop uh, interface something more similar to windows xp rather than ubuntu which uses something which seems reasonably familiar to a mac but i'm certainly no mac expert so I certainly feel that Linux Mint is 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 the distribution I would recommend for uh, uh, for for newcomers as well as well as um, the fact that it's it's stable, but also because it's on a long term support, it means that if you like fix an error, um, you don't really have to come back to it until you're sort of re reformatting the distribution or not reform reform reformatting your disk drive to to install the next version of uh linux mint because when you upgrade linux mint every two years they recommend that you you do a fresh install so yeah state of playing linux i i mean as far as i'm concerned it's never been better so i switched over to from uh linux mint to manjaro so I decided to actually finally give a rolling distribution a go. This was as a result of um, the review that I did. I looked at the review. I think I reviewed the... I think originally, a long time ago, I reviewed XFCE. Then I did the KDE one for like a long-term review. And I really liked that. And then I, I came back to Mint after sort of, you know, and then I started using... No, then I started using Antergos, then I started, yeah, then I started cycling through my various daily drivers until, um, so I never went back to Mint after that. So, I, yeah, then I cycled through my, my all my daily drivers, because I liked Antergos as well. Antergos is a great, um, if Manjaro doesn't suit you, Manjaro doesn't work, Antergos is great. But I, the thing I liked about Manjaro is that it comes with the non-free driver support out of the box, which is going to make it very accessible to people who have NVIDIA cards who don't really know why it's more difficult to get their drivers to work. Uh, I like the fact that Manjaro were just like, nope, included, boom, there you go. So um, so I did. I was very impressed with some of the little touches that Manjaro did. So I decided to go with Manjaro as my main primary driver, feeling quite perilous because it's a rolling distribution. And I really did like it, but it was very buggy. It's very buggy. It's a very buggy distribution. Like every month they'll do like a big update of a lot of the packages that they've held back from Arch. And you will often find that bugs can arise out of that. Now, because it's a rolling distribution with a lot of regular updates, you will often find that the fix will just be an upgrade down the road. So if it's a minor annoyance, then all you have to do is put up with it for like a couple of weeks and then it'll just be fixed back to normal, which is a great blessing. And you see a lot of very annoying bugs fixed out that way. Um, and, and that works really, really well. But that being said, initial problems arise more often as well and sometimes they can be quite nasty as well it updates the kernel very often a lot more often than linux mint so um 
so you you know i've had a couple of kernel problems i've had to switch which kernel i boot from which is again these are small minor issues but they're ones that um that i wouldn't say think that a newbie would be prepared to deal with um and there are a lot of them as well that's the that's the other issue is that you will learn how to fix and diagnose errors very very quickly when you're on a rolling release and that i suppose if you want to learn how to fix computers a, a rolling release is, is kind of good like that um, in regards to its stability, it still is, you know, I mean, it's run. I've never had a problem actually getting one to boot up and go, um, minus the kernel error. And even then, the kernels actually booted up. It was just when they were actually booted up, there was there was some little bugs and stuff. So you just switch which kernel you boot from, bang, jobs are good. Um, in terms of its stability, it was fine, like in its core stability, in the ability to boot up, that was fine. It was just the programs that were on top of it, the stuff in the repositories. There was uh, compatibility, compatibility, some compatibility issues with some of the packages from the AUR. That's the AUR. That's that's you know the community stuff is 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 out there as well. Um, but I really did like it. If and if you're willing to sort of put in a couple, you're going to put in a couple of hours a month fixing some of the problems that you're, you're going to come up against. You'll get better and it'll get faster. But it is a it is a distribution I recommend if you really want to get your teeth into Linux and you kind of want to take a step away from Ubuntu. I'm still on it at the moment. I am thinking about possibly either sticking with it or possibly trying one of the Ubuntu's uh, on a six month cycle just to see what that's like. I might I could very well actually end up trying ubuntu as a primary driver once the new long-term support is released in april i might very well um then possibly transition across to linux mint if i don't move away from manjaro just simply to see what those guys have to offer um so anyway that's about it for me today um thank you very much for uh, watching um all in all state of linux pretty damn fantastic they've certainly accelerated in areas like um uh, like gaming, like in multimedia creation. Uh, I have not had a problem in any of the compatibility side of things. Like it's, I, I can just deploy Linux on a, on a piece of software, on a piece of hardware rather. And it's always, you know, at this point it worked. Scanners, plug in and go. Printers, plug in and go. And for the most part, I've only ever come across bugs and instability when I've kind of been seeking it, when I've been playing a dangerous game. But if I wanted to deploy a secure system that won't break, I know how to do it and I can do it. And any, I feel that like with a with a little bit of instruction or a decent you know decent documentation, I feel anyone can. Also, I couldn't help but notice over recent years that the number of desktop environments has increased. Whereas it used to be pretty much GNOME, KDE, and XFCE, now we've got just about well I don't know like a dozen. We've got you know everything from the Deepin, Pantheon, uh, Cinnamon, Mate, um, and uh, you know many of them seem really actually quite good as well. So. Um, so there certainly seems a lot of interesting stuff there. I'm actually trying out Mate at the moment on Manjaro, and it's uh, it's really good. I really like it. It's exactly what I want. It's sort of it doesn't do too much. It stays out of your way. It's nice. It's responsive. It looks good. It's got plenty of um, you know sort of small user features and stuff like that. Um, and and it's very customizable. Um, so. So I've got to say that's certainly a win. I do kind of feel that a lot of the in a lot of the cases we might actually could very well end up with too many desktop environments, and some of them might end up being sort of un under maintained and start dying off. Um, possibly XFC, I don't know. That seems to be the one that's ha that's sort of hanging on by a thread. But um, but it might it might recover. It might recover. Anyway, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching, and please let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below.